Hello and welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. Coming up in today's program, youth involvement in agriculture, particularly in beekeeping. We'll have all that and more. Every month of the year, there has been in our history some incidents of flooding that has taken place in some aspect of the country. And that is something that we have to take note of. Apart from monitoring and giving the forecast, we are also responsible for warnings. And so there are some warnings that we want you to take special heed to if you consider yourself to be vulnerable in any situation. When we speak about a flash flood watch, it means that there is a feature, some kind of weather system that is going to produce enough rainfall that makes it possible for you to get flooding. So it means start to watch because the water levels are going to be increasing and there is the possibility of the flooding. Now, if we start to see that in some area, flooding has started to occur, or if we believe that the flooding has been so close to an area that it is going to happen in that area in a short space of time, we will escalate that flash flood watch and refer to it as a flash flood warning. So when we talk about a flash flood warning, it means not only that the flooding is possible, but the flooding either has already started to happen or is going to happen in a very short space of time because it is very close to that area. So it is important to know what the watch means as opposed to what the warning means. Usually with the warning, we will not only issue a warning, but we will also tell you what kind of actions are important or what you should not do. Like do not go through flooded waterways because it could pose a risk to your life and to your property. Also, if you live in low-lying or flood-prone areas, if it is an area that is regularly experiencing flooding, a flash flood warning for your area would mean that now is the time to move to higher ground because the flooding has already started or is going to happen very shortly. It is also important for us to know where we live because sometimes in our messages we might not refer to the actual town but we will tell you what part of the country the flood watch or the flood warning is relevant to. So if we talk about central parishes, we are referring to Clarendon. We're also talking about Manchester. We're also talking about St. Anne. These are central parishes. So you have to be knowledgeable of where you live so that you know whether the message actually applies to you. The messages that we issue for hurricanes and tropical storms are watches and warnings as well, like the flooding. But in this case, for a tropical storm or a hurricane, when we issue a watch, it means the conditions that are associated with the storm or the hurricane are possible within a certain time frame. If you hear tropical storm or hurricane watch, you could get the impact of that system within a day and a half, 36 hours. If we mention that it is a tropical storm or a hurricane warning, it means that you only have one day before that thing can affect you. So we are moving to how quickly you need to make sure that you are prepared by naming it a watch or a warning. So the watch is the first level of the alert that there is something that is likely to affect you. But when we move to a warning, it means now is the time to batten down because you most likely are going to experience that storm or hurricane. We might have a tropical wave, which is the least of, the, of, of them in that it can still cause a lot of rain and it can still cause flooding and devastation, but it will not have very strong winds associated with it. But then there is the tropical depression that is a little stronger because now you have winds that are moving with it, gusty winds, and it also has a lot of rainfall. 
then you have tropical storms, which is a more severe kind of tropical depression because the winds are even stronger. And then if it gets even stronger, it could become a hurricane. So it's important that you have your radio and that your radio is battery controlled, not dependent on electricity, so that you can hear the warning messages that come from the meteorological service. Also bear in mind that if you dial 116, you will be able to hear the latest message coming out of the meteorological service related to any warnings. We cannot stop paying attention. We cannot let down our guard. You have to prepare yourself and stay prepared until we are out of the threat. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Let's explore the inspiring stories of young beekeepers who are making a meaningful impact today for a brighter tomorrow. Me and my sister got started when we were very young. I think I was six or something around that age. And uh, my mom had four box, four hives. And that is the beginning of success. The name of our family business is Maccabee Enterprise. Uh, here at Maccabee Enterprise, we are all beekeepers, down to my nine-year-old sister, Camila. Working with the bees is nice. It's less challenging than back in the days. Don't want to sound too old. Um, it is fun now. I am more confident. Yeah. Um, it is calming, soothing. It takes you out of this world, bring in another. So it, it's fun. It's actually fun. My role here on the farm is using an extractor. To extract honey, um, there are many ways. I will be explaining two ways. First is the professional method where you use an extractor so you have a capping knife a knife with like a serrated edge and you would uncap which is a thin sheet of wax on top of the comb with the honey inside so it's like a seal so you use a knife and uncap that then you put it in the extractor and spin it and it would flash out on the side of the extractor and drain to the bottom and then you leak it out into a bucket the other way is, well, when you don't have an extractor, is that you'd use a capping fork or you could use a regular fork and you would hold the frame uh, like this, long way, and you'd use the fork and gently scrape the frame. So you're taking off the comb, you're removing the comb from the frame in a sense, but you'd have on the frame there is a sheet of wax that we would put on as beekeepers foundation so it would guide the bees like it would guide the bees to build more small cells that would get more workers in the hive from the bees we get five main products right we have pollen propolis, beeswax, honey, and royal jelly. So based on those five things, we actually think about what we can do with those five things. So in beekeeping, we, have, we actually have honey flow periods and we have dirt season. Those are the two main periods. In between, we have like a pre-flow and um, pre-dirt basically. But okay, so 
in our honey season that's the time when they're on production they're bringing in their honey their pollen everything the pan top but for like in saint thomas there is like a six month period where there's dirt there's no honey coming no much honey that we can read there's just enough for them to have for them to feed themselves and their babies and be able to stay alive in the dirt period when there's not enough honey for us to harvest and be able to sell we do things like remove our old combs and boil it out and we get wax with the wax we do like the body butters we do candles lip conditioner um so that's the wax with the pollen we actually call it the pollen and the pollen is a very good multivitamins so we actually call it the pollen and um, dry it and package it for sale for the royal jelly we don't do a lot of work with the royal jelly um, as we go along we are actually developing products so um, for the royal jelly right now we put it in our honey wine and then again the honey wine is made from honey my involvement in making the byproducts are production i do most of the labels um, i have help so i can't take all the credit but most of the labels are from me i do social media marketing um, so most of the WhatsApp texts, um, Instagram, they might mostly be for me. My younger siblings involvement in the business is some help with the production. So there is some small things like shredding the wax that they can do. They help with the bees as well because we're, we're homeschool and we kind of tag along with our parents right through and through. So with the bees and with production and my younger sister, she's very artistic. So when I'm actually doing the labels, sometimes she would draw this beautiful picture and I would actually use that as part of the label. I have four personal hives for myself. I have three long, long struts, which is the regular kind of box that you would see that holds 10 frame and they would stack on one, one on top of the other. And I have one top bar, which is a 30 frame box, which goes a long way. And it only has a top bar. It doesn't have a top bar with the square. It doesn't have a frame, it's just the top bar. My advice to other youth interested in beekeeping is you have to be persistent and you have to be confident and you have to be committed to beekeeping. Beekeeping can be very wide. You don't have to just stuck with the bees, the sting, the honey. There is so much more that you can do. You can do candles. There is actually a shortage of beeswax candles. And beeswax candles are very easy. You mold, you wick, you, you color if you need and you're done. Um, lip conditioner is another easy one. And if you go on online, just take some of your time out of your texting and just research some products that you, can, that you can actually do from the products that you get from the bees, the five products I mentioned, there's so much more. What am I? Food? Is it a fruit? Apple! <laughs> Your turn. What am I? Goat? Go! Yes! Guys, it seems like a hurricane is coming. What are we going to do? We need to be prepared. What are we going to do? 
Don't worry, Lisa. We got this covered. We got this covered, Lisa. Don't worry. What are we going to do? Everything will be okay. Lisa, we got this covered. Don't yes, worry. Yes, everything Don't will worry. be okay. All right? All preparation okay, place. Joshua. Okay. We are in the hurricane season, and it's important to be prepared for anything that can happen. A big part of that is having conversations with your children about the hurricane season and what to expect. Counseling psychologist Jody Lee is here to walk us through the process. We start with the definition of what the hurricane is. You, you know, then you go into what are some of the features of a hurricane, what are some of the um, things that you might experience during a hurricane, so flooding depending on where you are, consistent rain, heavy downpours, um, lightning, thunder, and you get from them how they would feel about those things. Try to reassure them that we are handling the situation, and so by handling it means we have a family safety plan. So having a family safety plan would look like knowing the extent of prepare, preparation you need to do. So if, if you need to fix some things on your house or if we need to get materials to batten down windows, check that roofs are okay, not leaking, find a particular area in the house that would be a safe zone. So um, finding things that we will need to put into a safety plan, so, you know, the basics, water, canned food, um, making sure that our documents are sealed. So you would go through that entire process with them and you involve them as much as possible. But what we want them to know is okay if you are worried, but there are things that we can do to make sure that you are safe. And so, you know, one of those is to make sure that we are tuning into the radio and listening to the broadcast from um, reputable news sources. But with that also, you need to be careful as to how much they, you allow them to get that information. So it's important to maybe filter the information through yourself first. So you listen, you limit their access to it, and then you give them the information that they need in the moment rather than them having access to all of this information and it might feel like a little bit too much, a little too big and they get overwhelmed. In preparation for a hurricane, you say to them, your devices might not work and you know we might have to be preserving batteries, so we're going to go old school and we're going to play some games or you know we're going to find little scavenger hunts around the house, but find things to make it interesting for them, find ways to help them to distract but not just be distracted but also to be connected to you so that they have that sense of security. The other thing to recognize with children, particularly the younger ones, is that their anxiety might come out through repetition. Try not to be irritated. Try not to think, all right, they're not listening and they're not paying attention. This is them trying to get security for themselves. This is them trying to make sure that the answer doesn't change so that means things are going to be okay. It is also important to have all your emergency numbers of government agencies, families, and friends that you can reach out to. It's best to place these at a position where the entire family is able to see them or have the numbers on speed dial so you can make contact easily. Flu season is here. Let's fight the flu with these tips. Stay up to date with recommended flu vaccines. Practice good hygiene, that is frequent hand washing and sanitizing, covering your mouth and nose when sneezing, and sanitizing frequently touched surfaces. You're also encouraged to eat a balanced diet, take vitamin and mineral supplements, stay hydrated, and stay away from persons displaying flu-like symptoms. Protect yourself this flu season.
Finding creative, engaging, and enjoyable ways to incorporate math into everyday parenting can be challenging, but there are ways to make learning fun for kids through simple daily activities. Take a look. What is it, my daughter? I can't do that much here. All right. Let me take a look at it now. Math can seem daunting, but there are a few things you can do to support your child at home. One area to look at is games. We all play games on a regular basis, especially children. And how much fun would it be to tie mathematics into the games they play? There's a very interesting notion that is put forward. And that notion is the fact that the things that we are interested in are the same things that we seem to do well in. Now, if it is that around our interest, there's also a heightened level of performance or we seem to learn things much faster when we are in tune, it therefore becomes important for us to actually put emphasis on making mathematics an interest. Because once we begin to allow our students or our children to see the fun in math and begin to develop a level of interest, it is at that point in time you will find that they may learn the concepts much faster. Arithmetic helps us in keeping track of time, conducting business and making plans. In reinforcing the math from home, we have to do a few things. One, you could, while cooking or baking, allow your child to come forward and to share the math concepts that they were exposed to in school. I'm sure while you're cooking something, your child can apply some measurement skills, some conversions, some um, looking at the beakers and so on. Additionally, we know that at times we do some amount of sorting and organizing. There's always a shelf somewhere to be packed, a cabinet to be reorganized, some things to be moved around. This is an opportunity to, sh to allow your child to use their spatial awareness to be able to look at shapes. Do you want to know what I do? I find creative ways to incorporate the knowledge to them because math is not an easy subject and most children will tell you that math hard, math hard, but this is something that they need in their everyday life. So I find creative ways to put it to them in, in, in fun ways that they, we, we both can enjoy doing it together. Some of the concepts that I believe that parents could pay a keen attention to is the number concept, like the simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You have to know at least the basics. I mean, we're not gonna tell them about the algebras and the other areas, which Indeed. is a little bit challenging to them. Right. But at least know to, to make change, know how to know the difference between um, distance and time and, and things like those. I'll, I'll try to encourage all fathers at least to know the basic about the, the, the concept of maths. For the primary student, you use whatever they like. Okay. If, if, if they like food, they use food. Divide up the pizza, show them how to divide it. If they like money, they're, they're the children who, who love playing with money and love counting money, use the money. Look at your child textbook. You'll see the topics based on the child age group, all the topics that they'll go through throughout the entire year. And you can also consult with the teacher and find out what topic am I looking at now so that you can use all the online resources. We have to find out what is the root of the problem first. Is it that you're not understanding? Are you not grasping as much as you are being taught? Then that much we need to identify what are the weak areas, what are the problems? What, once we can identify what is the problem, then we can actually try and fix it from there. So we're not supposed to be thinking with our fixed mindset that there's only one way so the teacher is doing it wrong. We could be doing it wrong, we might never know. So we'll have to be open to the fact that we're not the only person with an opinion or this is not the only way of solving that one problem. Parents, I want to encourage you today. When it is that your child comes home with the math book, 
and you realize that the approach that is being taken to deliver the content is not the same way you are used to it. Don't throw it aside and say, no, that's wrong or that is harder, that's different. You need to embrace the approach. There is many ways to help. Right. You don't have to help physically. But being there to sit down and to encourage the child, talk with them, or even while they're doing it, you, you, you look over and say, yes, man, yes, man. Okay, try it this way. I mean, that is support. Support your child and give them the push they need. In math, practice makes perfect. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four R's of water conservation today. In light of increasing natural disasters, it's crucial to be prepared. Part of that preparation involves safeguarding your vital documents. This can save you from added stress and complications. Here are some essential tips to ensure your documents are protected. Let's start with the basics. Vital documents include birth certificates, passports, insurance policies, medical records, and property deeds. These are the lifelines you'll need during and after a disaster. Make digital copies of all your important documents. You can scan these and store them on a secure cloud service like Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive. This ensures you have access to them from anywhere with an internet connection. Digital documents can also be stored on a USB drive. Store physical copies of your documents in a waterproof and fireproof safe or cabinet. These are designed to withstand extreme conditions and can be a lifesaver. Place the safe or cabinet in an easily accessible location, but not where it could be easily found by intruders. Put together a grab-and-go bag with copies of your most crucial documents. Include essential items like identification, insurance policies, and emergency contact information. This bag should be easy to carry and placed in an accessible spot in your home. <music> Lastly, keep your information updated. Regularly review and update your emergency contact list and ensure all documents are current. By taking these steps, you can ensure that your vital documents are protected, giving you one less thing to worry about during a disaster. Remember, being prepared can make all the difference. Stay safe and stay informed. And that's it for today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Remember, in the heart of every young person lies the potential for greatness. Do join us again tomorrow for another informative show. In the meantime, visit our website, gis.gov.jm, for more news you can use. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do stay safe. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.